hello hello my true crime junkies welcome back i just wanted to pop up in here and post a little quickie episode this week um it is thanksgiving week so i wanted to make sure that i posted a little short story um i did find a couple of cases that happened during thanksgiving week so i wanted to share those with you um in the spirit of thanksgiving and um just reminding everybody just to make sure they subscribe and continue listening and catching up on my episodes and i do hope you guys enjoy this one and definitely stay tuned um so i'm gonna be getting started now um in 1789 president george washington declared november 26 to be the official recognized as a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts and many and signal favors of almighty god since then americans have celebrated thanksgiving day on each fourth thursday of november with most citizens typically observing a traditional gathering at families and intimate friends for a peaceful turkey centered feast now there are these people that i'm going to talk to you about that committed some heinous bad heavy crimes on thanksgiving day i'm going to be starting with someone named omaima nelson she is a model who killed and castrated and ate her husband for thanksgiving so this happened on thanksgiving day 1991 the egyptian born fashion model omaima nelson 23 years of age repeatedly plunged a pair of scissors into the chest and stomach of bill nelson her 56 year old pilot husband then she reached for a clothing iron as bill flailed omaima pummeled him to death with the iron until the heavy object actually broke in her hand so just imagine the force it takes to break an iron omaima unleashed her fury she claimed over the sexual terror and other abuse to which bill had subjected her acts that reportedly included him pimping out his glamorous bride to kinky old creeps in exchange for rent, cash, and in one case, a car. When Bill finally expired, Omaima butchered his body on the kitchen floor. She then boiled his hands in oil to remove fingerprints and stuck his head in the freezer so she could later break out his teeth. In symbolic revenge, Omaima made a point of castrating her husband as well. And all this happened during Thanksgiving, on a Thanksgiving day. Now, this is a second case. His name is Paul Michael Merhich. A Thanksgiving massacre, 20 years in the making. On November 26, 2009, South Florida resident Paul Michael Merhich ate a hearty Thanksgiving meal with 16 family members and friends conversing and joking and even joining in sing-alongs. After dinner, Merhich whipped out a handgun and executed four relatives, including his cousin-in-law, his twin sisters, one of whom was pregnant, and his cousin's six-year-old daughter. Afterwards, Merhich reportedly said, I've waited 20 years to do this. Merhich fled the scene but was captured and eventually cut a plea deal for seven consecutive life sentences to avoid the death penalty. Can you just imagine sitting there with your family and everybody's enjoying their time with each other and suddenly he just, someone just loses their mind and massacres the whole family in one moment? That is a holiday that I will never forget. Next, 
I'm going to talk about a man, a guy called Ayalis Clay Oliver. He's a Colorado. A, he's in Colorado. Um, the father that kills his son over unfinished Thanksgiving chores. Are you kidding me? The annoyance Ayalis Clay Oliver, 76 years old, felt towards his son Keith Oliver, 49, over the young man's refusal to help out around the house, escalated to homicidal rage on Thanksgiving Day 2009. The father and son had reportedly been arguing for hours. Prior to Marjorie Oliver, 75, Ayala's wife and Keith Oliver, Keith Oliver's mother asking her son to leave. He refused. His father went upstairs, retrieved a 357 caliber revolver, and shot Oliver to death. All because he didn't want to do chores on Thanksgiving. This is just amazing. The things people lose their minds and take it out on family members or anybody. Just choose to kill someone. It's horrible. Now the next case is a man's home is his castle is byron david smith thanksgiving day's murders byron david smith a retired security engineer officer with the u.s state department had dealt with his little with his little falls minnesota home being burglarized several times in as many months he installed an alarm system completed with video cameras aimed at several areas around his house then on thanksgiving day in 2012 he sat in his basement with a rifle and waited the video from that day captured smith moving his truck from the driveway prior to the break-in to make it appear as he wasn't home then an hour later Two teens in a hoodie can be seen casing the place before entering the property. The teens were Hale, Haley Elaine Kiefer, 18, and her cousin Nicholas Brady, 17, at that time, both of whom were unarmed. Smith had suspected Kiefer and Brady of having been responsible for at least some of the earlier break-ins and they were later suspected of robbery of retired school teachers that had occurred earlier that day. While Smith sat in his basement waiting, he had taped a recorder running, to a tape recorder running. There's, there are hours of audio recordings that documented his timeline and just waiting, completed with sounds of breaking glass and the confrontation. The audio captures the shots fired and Smith's statements during and after the killings, including, I refuse to live in fear. I am not bleeding heart liberal. I felt like I was cleaning up a mess. I was doing my civic duty. I don't see them as human. I see them as vermin, end quote. Incredibly, despite the two dead bodies in the, his house, in his house, Smith wouldn't actually call the police until the next day, stating that he didn't want to bother them because it was Thanksgiving holiday. So he spent Thanksgiving Day with two dead bodies in his basement, which he felt that was self-defense, even though he planned the he planned the robbery. He was expecting them to show up and planned to make sure that he took vengeance on them. So a lot of people were hurt in this case. The two teenagers' families and this guy that shot the kids. It's terrible. Now let's move on to the next one, which is the last one. Her name is Shanika Olsup. She stabs 
half brother in the neck with serving fork over Thanksgiving dinner. Wow. Thanksgiving 2012 turned gory for celebrants gathered at the home of Shanika Olsup, 27 years of age. In the course of siblings spat about the food being served, Shanika stabbed her half-brother, Deontay Antonio Wallace, 23 years old, in the neck with a serving fork. Wallace survived and Shanika also went to jail for first degree assault, second degree assault, and reckless endangerment. So over a freaking piece of food, a meal that you can make any day, you chose to hurt someone, literally aim to kill over food, and now you're serving time in jail forever it's it's a shame that these things happen over petty things let's think about this people thanksgiving holidays christmas is meant to sit gather love each other just be at peace and be thankful for what you have and thankful for the people that surround you and appreciate life let's take this time to do that right now times are hard and life is hard and the world is chaos so let's just take the day to take it easy if you have family members coming over let's spend it relaxing chilled and Let's just appreciate this time with loved ones that you don't get to see every day. You know, have a little quick meal and just relax and enjoy and be thankful. It doesn't happen often. Some people don't have family members near to celebrate Thanksgiving with. So just enjoy. I do want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Um, and I will be posting a full, full episode um, in the next couple of days, I will post it on Instagram once it's ready. So just make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so we can, um, so you don't miss the next episode. It's going to be a good one. And I wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays. Be safe and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.